Girolamo Savonarola was an Italian Dominican friar and preacher active in Renaissance Florence. He was known for his prophecies of civic glory, the destruction of secular art and culture, and his calls for Christian renewal. He denounced clerical corruption, despotic rule and the exploitation of the poor. He prophesied the coming of a biblical flood and a new Cyrus from the north who would reform the church. In September 1494, when Charles VIII of France invaded Italy and threatened Florence, such prophecies seemed on the verge of fulfillment. While Savonarola intervened with the French king, the Florentines expelled the ruling Medician at the friars' urging, established a popular republic, declaring that Florence would be the new Jerusalem, the world center of Christianity and richer, more powerful, more glorious than ever. He instituted an extreme puritanical campaign, enlisting the active help of Florentine youth. In 1495, when Florence refused to join Pope Alexander VI as a holy league against the French, the Vatican summoned Savonarola to Rome. He disobeyed and further defied the Pope by preaching under a ban, highlighting his campaign for reform with processions, bonfires of the vanities, and pious theatricals. In retaliation, the Pope excommunicated him in May 1497, and threatened to place Florence under an interdict. A trial by fire proposed by a rival Florentine preacher in April 1498 to test Savonarola's divine mandate turned into a fiasco, and popular opinion turned against him. Savonarola and two of his supporting friars were imprisoned. Under torture, Savonarala confessed that he had invented his visions and prophecies. On May 23, 1498, church and civil authorities condemned, hanged, and burned the three friars in the main square of Florence. Savonarola's devotees, the Pianiona, kept his cause of republican freedom and religious reform alive well into the following century. Although the Medici, restored to power in 1512 with the help of the papacy, eventually broke the movement. Early years. Savonarala was born on September 21, 1452, in Ferrara. His grandfather, Michel Savonarala, was a noted physician and polymath. Save and our Ola's mother Elena claimed a lineage from the Bonacossi family of Mantua. She and her husband Niccolo had seven children, of whom Girolamo was third. His grandfather was a very successful physician who oversaw his education. His family had amassed in his grandfather's footsteps. At some point, however, he abandoned his career intentions. In his early poems, he expresses his preoccupation with the state of the church and of the world. He began to write poetry of an apocalyptic bent, notably, on the ruin of the world and on the ruin of the church, in which he singled out the papal court at Rome for special obloquy. About the same time, he seems to have been thinking about a life in religion. As he later told his biographer, a sermon he heard by a preacher in Fenza persuaded him to abandon the world. Most of his biographers reject or ignore the account of his younger brother and follower, Morelio, that in his youth Girolamo had been spurned by a neighbor, Lord Omiastrozzi, to whom he proposed marriage. True or not, in a letter he wrote to his father when he left home to join the Dominican order he hints at being troubled by desires of the flesh. There is also a story that on the eve of his departure he dreamed that he was cleansed of such thoughts by a shower of icy water which prepared him for the ascetic life. In the unfinished treatise he left behind, later called De Contemptu Mundi, or On Contempt for the World, he calls upon readers to fly from this world of adultery, sodomy, murder and envy. On April 25, 1475, Girolamo Savonarala went to Bologna where he knocked on the door of the convent of San Domenico, of the Order of Friars Preachers, and asked to be admitted. As he told his father in his farewell letter, he wanted to become a Knight of Christ. Friar, in the convent, Savonarala took vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience and after a year was ordained to the priesthood. 
He studied scripture, logic, Aristotelian philosophy and Thomistic theology in the Dominican Studium, practiced preaching to his fellow friars and engaged in disputations. He then matriculated in the theological faculty to prepare for an advanced degree, even as he continued to write devotional works and to deepen his spiritual life he was openly critical of what he perceived as the decline in convent, austerity. In 1478 his studies were interrupted when he was sent to the Dominican Priory of Santa Maria degli Angeli in Ferrara's assistant master of novices. The assignment might have been a normal, temporary break from the academic routine, but in Savonarola's case it was a turning point. One explanation is that he had alienated certain of his superiors, particularly Fra Vincenzo Bandelli, or Bandello, a professor at the Studium and future Master General of the Dominicans who resented the young friar's opposition to modifying the order's rules against the ownership of property. In 1482, instead of returning to Bologna to resume his studies, Savonarola was assigned as lector, or teacher, in the convent of San Marco in Florence. In San Marco, Fra Girolamo taught logic to the novices, wrote instructional manuals on ethics, logic, philosophy, and government composed devotional works, and prepared his sermons for local congregations. As he recorded in his notes, his preaching was not altogether successful. Florentines were put off by his foreign-sounding Ferrari's speech, his strident voice, and his inelegant style. While waiting for a friend in the convent of San Giorgio he was studying scripture when he suddenly conceived about seven reasons why the church was about to be scourged and renewed. He broached these apocalyptic themes in San Gimignano where he went as Lenten preacher in 1485 and again in 1486, but a year later, when he left San Marco for a new assignment, he had said nothing of his San Giorgio revelations in Florence. Preacher for the next several years, Savonarola lived as an itinerant preacher with a message of repentance and reform in the cities and convents of North Italy. As his letters to his mother and his writings show, his confidence and sense of mission grew along with his widening reputation. In 1490, he was reassigned to San Marco. It seems that this was due to the initiative of the humanist philosopher Prince Giovanni Pico della Mirandola, who had heard Savonarola in a formal disputation in Reggio Emilia and been impressed with his learning and piety. Pico was in trouble with the Church for some of his unorthodox philosophical ideas and was living under the protection of Lorenzo the Magnificent the Medici de facto ruler of Florence. To have Savonarola beside him as a spiritual counselor, he persuaded Lorenzo that the friar would bring prestige to the convent of San Marco and its Medici patrons. After some delay, apparently due to the interference of his former professor, Fra Vincenzo Bandelli, now vicar general of the order, Lorenzo succeeded in bringing Savonarola back to Florence, where he arrived in May or June of that year. Prophet Savonarola preached on the first epistle of John and on the book of Revelation, drawing such large crowds that he eventually moved to the cathedral. Without mentioning names, he made pointed allusions to tyrants who usurped the freedom of the people, and he excoriated their allies, the rich and powerful who neglected and exploited the poor. Complaining of the evil lives of a corrupt clergy, he now called for repentance and renewal before the arrival of a divine scourge. Scoffers dismissed him as an overexcited zealot and preacher of the desperate, and sneered at his growing band of followers as Piagioni, weepers, or wailers, an epithet they adopted. In 1492 Savonarola warned of the sword of the Lord over the earth quickly and soon, and envisioned terrible tribulations to Rome. Around 1493 he began to prophesy that a new Cyrus was coming over the mountains to begin the renewal of the church. In September 1494 King Charles VIII of France crossed the Alps with a formidable army, throwing Italy into political chaos. Many viewed the arrival of King Charles as proof of Savonarola's gift of prophecy. 
Charles, however, advanced on Florence, sacking Tuscan strongholds and threatening to punish the city for refusing to support his expedition. As the populace took to the streets to expel Piero the unfortunate, Lorenzo de Medici's son and successor, Savonarola led a delegation to the camp of the French king in mid-November 1494. He pressed Charles to spare Florence and enjoined him to take up his divinely appointed role as the reformer of the church. After a short, tense occupation of the city, and another intervention by Fra Girolamo, the French resumed their journey southward on November 28. 1494. Savonarola now declared that by answering his call to penitence, the Florentines had begun to build a new Ark of Noah which had saved them from the waters of the Divine Flood. Even more sensational was the message in his sermon of December 10. I announce this good news to the city, that Florence will be more glorious, richer, more powerful than she has ever been, first glorious in the sight of God as well as of men, and a you, O oh Florence will be the reformation of all Italy, and from here the renewal will begin and spread everywhere, because this is the navel of Italy, your counsels will reform all by the light and grace that God will give you, second, O oh Florence, you will have innumerable riches, and God will multiply all things for you, third, you will spread your empire and thus you will have power temporal and spiritual. This astounding guarantee may have been an allusion to the traditional patriotic myth of Florence as the new Rome, which Savonarola would have encountered in his readings in Florentine history. In any case, it encompassed both temporal power and spiritual leadership. In Machiavelli's The Prince Discussed in Chapter 6 of Niccolò Machiavelli's book The Prince, Fra Girolamo Savonarola was seen by Machiavelli as an incompetent, ill-prepared, and unarmed prophet, unlike Moses, Cyrus, Theseus, and Romulus. If Savonarola, Machiavelli wrote, if Moses, Cyrus, Theseus, and Romulus had been unarmed they could not have enforced their constitutions for long, as happened in our time to Fra Girolamo Savonarola, who was ruined with his new order of things immediately the multitude believed in him no longer, and he had no means of keeping steadfast those who believed or of making the unbelievers to believe. Reformer, with Savonarola's advice and support, a Savonarolan political party, dubbed the Fratishi, took shape and steered the friars' program through the councils. The oligarchs most compromised by their service to the Medici were barred from office. A new constitution enfranchised the artisan class, opened minor civic offices to selection by lot and granted every citizen in good standing the right to a vote in a new parliament. The Concilio Maggiore, or Great Council, at Savonarola's urging the Fratishi government, after months of debate, passed a law of appeal to limit the long-time practice of using exile and capital punishment as factional weapons. Savonarola declared a new era of universal peace. On January 13, 1495 he preached his great renovation sermon to a huge audience in the cathedral, recalling that he had begun prophesying in Florence four years earlier, although the divine light had come to him more than fifteen, maybe twenty years ago. He now claimed that he had predicted the deaths of Lorenzo de Medici and of Pope Innocent VIII in 1492 and the coming of the sword to Italy, the invasion of King Charles of France. As he had foreseen, God had chosen Florence, the navel of Italy, as his favorite and he repeated, if the city continued to do penance and began the work of renewal it would have riches, glory and power. If the Florentines had any doubt that the promise of worldly power and glory had heavenly sanction, Savonarola emphasized this in a sermon of April 1, 1495, in which he described his mystical journey to the Virgin Mary in heaven. At the celestial throne Savonarola presents the Holy Mother a crown made by the Florentine people and presses her to reveal their future. Mary warns that the way will be hard both for the city and for him, but she assures him that God will fulfill his promises. 
Florence will be more glorious, more powerful and richer than ever, extending its wings farther than anyone can imagine. She and her heavenly minions will protect the city against its enemies and support its alliance with the French. In the New Jerusalem that is Florence, peace and unity will reign. Based on such visions, Savonarala promoted theocracy and declared Christ the King of Florence. He saw sacred art as a tool to promote this worldview, and he was therefore only opposed to secular art, which he saw as worthless and potentially damaging. Buoyed by liberation and prophetic promise, the Florentines embraced Savonarola's campaign to rid the city of vice. At his repeated insistence, new laws were passed against sodomy, adultery, public drunkenness, and other moral transgressions. While his lieutenant Fra Silvestro Meruffi organized boys and young men to patrol the streets to curb a modest dress and behavior, for a time, Pope Alexander VI tolerated Fra Girolamo's strictures against the church. But he was moved to anger when Florence declined to join his new Holy League against the French invader, and blamed it on Savonarola's pernicious influence. An exchange of letters between the Pope and the friar ended in an impasse which Savonarola tried to break by sending His Holiness a little book, recounting his prophetic career and describing some of his more dramatic visions. This was the Compendium of Revelations, a brilliant self-dramatization which was one of the farthest reaching and most popular of his writings. The Pope was not mollified. He summoned the friar to appear before him in Rome, and when Savonarala refused, pleading ill health and confessing that he was afraid of being attacked on the journey, Alexander banned him from further preaching. For some months Savonarala obeyed, but when he saw his influence slipping he defied the Pope and resumed his sermons which became more violent in tone. He not only attacked secret enemies at home whom he rightly suspected of being in league with the papal curia, he condemned the conventional, or tepid, Christians who were slow to respond to his calls. He dramatized his moral campaign with special masses for the youth, processions, bonfires of the vanities and religious theater in San Marco. He and his close friend, the humanist poet Girolamo Benevina, composed laws and other devotional songs for the carnival processions of 1496. 1497 and 1498, replacing the bawdy carnival songs of the era of Lorenzo de Medici. These continued to be copied and performed after his death, along with songs composed by Pianiona in his memory. A number of them have survived. Excommunication and Death On May 12, 1497, Pope Alexander VI excommunicated Savonarala and threatened the Florentines with an interdict if they persisted in harboring him. On March 18, 1498, after much debate and steady pressure from the worried government, he withdrew from public preaching. Under the stress of excommunication, Savonarala composed his spiritual masterpiece, The Triumph of the Cross a celebration of the victory of the cross over sin and death and an exploration of what it means to be a Christian. This he summed up in the theological virtue of caritas, or love. In loving their neighbor, Christians return the love which they have received from their Creator and Savior. Savonarala hinted at performing miracles to prove his divine mission. But when a rival Franciscan preacher proposed to test that mission by walking through fire, he lost control of the public discourse. Without consulting him, his confidant Fra Domenico da Pescia offered himself as his surrogate and Savonarala felt he could not afford to refuse. The first trial by fire in Florence for over 400 years was set for April 7. A crowd filled the central square, eager to see if God would intervene and if so, on which side. The nervous contestants and the delegations delayed the start of the contest for hours. A sudden rain drenched the spectators and government officials cancelled the proceedings. The crowd disbanded angrily. The burden of proof had been on Savonarala and he was blamed for the fiasco. A mob assaulted the convent of San Marco. 
Fra Girolamo, Fra Domenico, and Fra Silvestro Maruffi were arrested and imprisoned. Under torture Savonarala confessed to having invented his prophecies and visions, then recanted, then confessed again. In his prison cell in the Tower of the Government Palace he composed meditations on Psalms 51 and 31. On the morning of May 23, 1498, the three friars were led out into the main square where, before a tribunal of high clerics and government officials, they were condemned as heretics and schismatics, and sentenced to die forthwith. Stripped of their Dominican garments in ritual degradation, they mounted the scaffold in their thin white shirts. Each on a separate gallows, they were hanged, while fires were ignited below them to consume their bodies. To prevent devotees from searching for relics, their ashes were carted away and scattered in the Arno.